What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode. We've got a really great one for you today. Uh, was up at uh, Williams Sale uh, back in mid-February and got a, a really great uh, cage trapping demo done by Jim Ball. He had an absolutely amazing season. I think he caught somewhere up in the ballpark of about 113 or so cats this season. Just absolutely crushed it. Um, shared a lot of his little insights and tips and tricks uh, at the sale with us. Uh, did about a 45 minute long demo. Um, just lots and lots of great information. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. This guy just, he really shared a lot of great information with us all. So hopefully you guys are able to uh, draw some stuff from this video and enjoy the footage. A big tree and there's probably a toilet under it or you know, um, toilets are another thing. Find a toilet that's probably a really good place to set is uh, those cat toilets. Uh, no guaranteed catches. Um, I said one of my biggest toilets this year, and uh, I caught two skunks, and that was it there. But there's places where I scout, I don't see any prints, I don't see any scat, and I catch three cats in that wash by the time it's it's trapping season. And so it's cats are. Are finicky, finicky animals, sometimes uh, unpredictable, but they're still fun to catch. So, um, so I like to set in sand uh, mainly because um, if I can find that, uh, that's a place that has sand, it's more weather friendly. Uh, I found out if, if I have to, uh, you know, search and find find dirt, um, if it rains. I don't have the trap covered, it becomes a, a big mud bog in here. Sand or uh, the, the fallings of like juniper trees, that's something that cover the bottom of the cage. Hey, what? Well, absolutely. Who left the phone in the bell? Oh. Anybody says a phone? What's the back of it look like? What's that? Is there a magnet on the back? I don't yeah, know. that looks like that's mine. I thought it was yours. Yeah. Here you go, Mike. Did you get that on video? Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I can't remember what I said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sand. So, yeah, I uh, lots of times had misses because we had a little sprinkle or something, and, or even a little snow melted. And it was mud, and the cat just walked by, and, and I don't know why I didn't go in, but a lot of times I just don't like the mud. Water will go through sand, it will go through a uh, brush or something, but definitely I would suggest you know, cover that bottom of that cage, you know, and, and also if you're in Catalina country with, uh, with sand, they don't like stepping their hooks go through sand, and they don't like stepping on that wire. I've noticed that on my Avelina catches got way less um, when I started using sand, you know, just the light sand in the bottom. And, and, uh, so that, that really helped. Um, I do sometimes, uh, if, it, if it is a snowy season or something, I do sometimes wrap, wrap my cages. Uh, if I'm higher elevation and, and stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll at least, you know, throw a bag over it. Um, after I put my scent, scent in the back and we'll get to that. Uh, I normally, I have closed pins and I just close pin this down and that kind of helps keep the cave look in there, you know, and very enticing to the cats and stuff. Uh, but I don't, I didn't use that any of that this year. We only had that one storm, really bad since January. Um, I couldn't get to part of my mind for a couple of days. But, so this is just said Mercer gave me some sand, but I uh, got a new pair of gloves. The old ones were definitely worn out, but they'll get covered in all sorts of way lure and call lure and, and urine and, and stuff. But um, good pair of gloves. My trapping basket, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, it's just from home to go. Um, things that I have in it, and, and of course that I always have whoppers um, to cut branches uh, and a small pair to 
cut my, my wides and, and smaller stuff and trim around the cage. Uh, I did. But offers and my little shovel, and I throw the gate in. So every set is the same thing. I pull it out of the truck. It has all three of those items in the back. So just grab my tote, and it's real easy. I can hike up to that bridge. I can hike down that wash. You know, it's pretty pretty easy to set in cages and, and have everything that I need. So in my bag, um, urine, and I what I what I do is I, I mix. Uh, it's just commercial urine from FET. Uh, bobcat urine. Um, I mix some of the Mercer lead and scent in there, get the, get the that minty smell. But I just put a big squirt, squirt in there. And, and, but some people can just use them separate if you want. Um, just right down the middle of the cage. That's what I, uh, what I do. Uh, and then my visual tractors. And it really doesn't matter. You can use tinsel like some of you uh, use. I've used cotton swabs. There's all sorts of just something visual in the back that uh, will help the cats pull them back to the back of the cage. So I, I this year I used some tan red fox, a whole bag of it for five bucks. Uh, it lasted me the whole season. So I just switch it off. Something something nice white, blood, fluffy. They say blue is also, blue and purples, cats like those. So you can, a feather blow up, something like that, you can do that. Um, and then I make these little hangers in the back that uh, when, I, when I open up the trap bed or, or something, I'll, I'll run the cage back and forth, try to get it as flat as possible, make sure nothing's under the hand. Sometimes I have to make my own trap beds. If uh, there's uh, open country with some capstone or rock country, I hike the cage up. The top of that mountain is pure rock. But I know the cats are running that the ridge or something. I have to make my own trap bed. I have to try to find, you know, even on branches, put it on, put it on um, some kind of branches, something to, to and then try to cover the, the cage bottom as, as best we can. Some of those places are really hard to set a cage, but it's worth it if you find a sign, if you know in your mind a cat's going to come down here within the next two weeks on the cages here. It's good to just find those spots, but uh, don't feel like you have to be in a hurry or anything like that. But, um, when I set washes and stuff, um, I don't like to set in the open, so um, I used to in the beginning, um, just Sometimes I have to, um, a big spot, but I have to set that cage and I just know that cat's coming down the middle of this, this place, it's wide open. Um, I have, I feel like I have to set the cage there. I'll just use more flagging. So uh, I'll, I'll cut a big old long branch and I left all my flags out in the truck, but um, what I got from like Mike there, I like, uh, I like tinsel, very light. The light color tinsel, it seems to be the best. You know, you can use CDs, you can use, um, I do have a bunch of feathers on uh, fishing swivels. Um, those, those really help, little white feathers from, from Hobby Lobby or something like that. Uh, those, those really help, but I used a lot more flagging this year and I think it helped, helped a lot. So, and then something else to do, I knew, I, I normally don't flag the gate, but I, I did on several others because normally the, the big flag above in the tree or on the stick, um, that's in front of the gate and then you draw the cat, but I, I've been doing a little bit more of flagging the gate with some tinsel, just basically putting a wire around the gate, top of the gate, and then there it comes up and it just kind of draws it a little bit more. It could hurt, you know, it's not going to scare scare the cat probably and probably can just help him get to the front of that gate a little bit better. But, um, I started doing that. But um, before I set I put my hanging thingy back there, slide it in place. Um, then I'll take my sand and I probably won't do it now, but I'll cover the bottom of that cage uh, with with sand. I throw my little fuzzy back there, just something so he can look down. Because he can look back 
uh, I want them to see up and down. Um, that way you're just walking in, you're just walking natural, not really staring at maybe a rock or something that I left on the way or something. You just walk and you start staring at that. Um, things that I use, um, Bobcat gland rule, and in here, in here I, so I use, uh, I think the last was uh, Cat Collector and some Montana Magic, but really, uh, in my opinion, uh, any kind of Bobcat gland lure will work. Um, just give that cat something to smell. Um, I've switched it up and I'll, I'll try some cat man do and some stuff next year. Um, but it, just give them that, that gland lure because it's especially in specific type, types of the season when they're searching for a mate, that'll come in real handy. And some people don't use it in a certain, you know, the first half of the year, then they start using it in the last. I just use it all year long. I, I, don't, I haven't seen any, any difference as far as catching more males and females. I just normally catch more males and females naturally. So. Um, this is what I think. Um, I would have a lot of misses in the beginning when I first started caging. Um, it was frustrating, like a bunch of us, when, when you have a bunch of misses, and I, I've got lots of messages and stuff and like that, so I, um, people just have to go, hey, what am I doing wrong in this? And, and it's just, it's probably just the cat most of, most of the time. Because I, even setting down wind and stuff, I, I still have four or five misses each line. You know? But that's good, that means there's still cats there, there's still cats running. I have been catching more, more kittens um, this year than last, and along with some of the other people. That's a, that's a good sign. Now that we have a healthy population in Arizona, and, and I'm glad. I, I have no problem letting, letting those kittens go and some of those smaller females um, as well, because it seems like the population is doing really well. And it seems like the, some of the same lines that I've, I've been running, um, you know, a couple years in a row and give it a break, it just seems to catch more every year. And they're like the same spots. But, so that's always a good sign. Um, I make my own long distance call or um, I got tired of everything smelling like skunk and so did my wife. So um, I, I, this has uh, it's just petroleum jelly, non-scented. And then I, I just mix some um, it's imitation catnip oil uh, from FNT and then it's some spearmint in it. So I, I can, and, and then some skunk. I, so I always put, it's always good to have some skunk in there. But it's not as it's not it's not as uh, strong as just pure scum. But when I started u using that um, and this, um, I started having way less refusals. So I'm not going to change that. I, I, I'm glad I started using that in the back of my cage. I don't put anything outside the cage besides a flag. Uh, just like Mercer has has taught us. Uh, you want that cat to go in the back of the cage. You know, any distractions, very distracting cats are. I have two male little house cats, very distracting. It's like, you know, I want them to be focused on the back of that cage. Um, you practice with the house cats? Oh, I have. Oh, yes, absolutely. And now they're, they're, they're on to my tricks, so uh, <laughs> um, they don't go into my cages in the backyard anymore. But, um, but it's, uh, so what I normally do is to set, um, um, I cut wise, and I save them after every set. When I pick it up, um, I'll dump everything out, save the wise, and just reuse them. It's just less, less cutting on how it feels. Um, to me, anything you can save time when you're out setting traps, you can set more traps. You're not spending a, a lot of time setting. You already have a plan. Boom, you, t you know, five, ten minutes at most. You got that set, you're already down the line. Um, check the next one. So I always have, uh, I'm not going to dip it, but I always put them in the back of the cage. Um, both the uh, call lure and, and the glam lure. The bottom's covered. I'll run a, run a stream of the urine and lead it sent down. And I, and I just pretty much 
make sure I hit my, my fuzzy thing out to the front of the cage. Um, that way they, yeah, leave them in. And then, um, uh, and then always have a uh, bobcat scat. And then what, if you're uh, out scouting or if you're just setting and you see scat, that's great. Set the spot, gather up, gather that scat up. That way the cat's not going over there, you know, somewhere else other than your cage to sniff the scat and uh, cover it up. Keep it. I got mounds and mounds of bobcat scat, so I'm good for a while. <laughs> but when I set it, uh, some people, uh, I mean, I do throw some in the back of the cage, but I, I always just, I'm a very habitual person, so all of them like look the same. But I'll put it off to the, the left of the cage, just so it's not blocking their path. Um, and they can, it's also, they can get a little bit closer smell of that, because I think they're more attracted to, hey, uh, the scat, you know, smell of it. So it, it'll just be, it's a little bit closer. Um, but you can also throw some in the back as well, but it's just a little bit farther for them to see. That's, that's just my opinion. Um, so. So and Jim, so, yeah. I mean to interrupt, but if you've got a, a toilet there, do you pick up all the turds? I pick all of it up. Okay, yep. I haven't been doing it. Yep. And uh, yeah, I pick it all up and, and save it or whatever you want. But I, I would save it. Yep. But pick it up so that they're not just milling around the toilet. They're they're going to focus on your cage. You know, that way anything bobcat related is right here, right, right in this little box here. Um, so, um, another thing uh, that might, while I'm here, is which I, which I, I don't know if it's true or not. Now that we don't, can't use game cameras, um, but mine seem to get stolen all the time. Um, make sure it's nice and clean, as best you can, depending on the, the foliage you're using, the sand you're using. Sometimes it's just it has rocks in it and just try to clean it out the best you can. Um, I noticed a couple times uh, because my pan tension, um, which always carries 7 16 uh, wrench, that way you can tighten or loosen this as needed. As it gets colder, as it gets hotter, it seems to loosen and tighten. So just uh, when, I, when you set the cage, just, just check it. Just put some, put, Put some tension on it. See how much it is. You should realize that you know if it falls real easy, uh, you're gonna be pack rat goes in, rabbit goes in. Um, if, if you, you want to try to eliminate those, yeah. You don't cover the pan with dirt. I did. I just I just told him I wasn't you, gonna do it you, now. You but yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. I, I thought you did. I yep. So I had seen some other posts that people that uh, they don't don't really cover it, you know, but. Even their leg holes, you know, up in Idaho and stuff, they'll just do an open leg hole trap, you know, walk through set, nothing on it, and catch cats. But that's that's for them. Yeah, that's for them. But, <laughs> but yeah, cover the bottom, nice smooth entrance. Um, especially if it looked like this, they may stop quite a bit right before that pan because it looks different. You know, you want it nice smooth. Um, back but always have your pan tension device handy um, when you do that but yeah it, um, also if, if you have gauge I noticed a couple times this year the wind had blown it down I tightened it up but a cat had um, even after it was up I did I didn't clear that line of dirt that it, when the gate fell it just created a little crease in the sand and the cat stopped in front, you know, and this was a couple times, and then just moved on like that, almost like that little line of dirt created a barrier. You know, it, it looked like in the back, but it just didn't like it, and and so uh, just clean it out with your hands. Yeah. Do you like to put a little bit of duff in there, or you know, sprinkle a little bit bits of leaves you, and stuff in um, there? Oh no, you or could. just I, leave it. I don't. There? I just I like the. The dirt or the sand. Even though the si even though off sides it's going to have leaves. <laughs> correct, correct. You'll just yep. leave it straight dirt. Yeah, especially okay. if I stick it in a, a bush or a, a tree. You know, I try to get it into something. Cause I uh, I haven't got to it yet. I, I like to get it up near an edge of a wash in a bush where that cat can't work around it. 
you know, that's why I was talking about earlier. I don't really like to open. Um, I catch cats there, but um, they seem to want to work the set more around the back, and then they're, they're, something happened, the wind's wrong direction, and they, their curiosity was cured, and they're, they're moving down the line. If it's in a bush, if, if it's pegged up in some, Valerie had a good set uh, that was an island of trees about around a big wash, and right in the, the tip of that island shoved it up in a bush, and so the cats are gonna go around that island, they're gonna work the middle of that island for, for rabbits and stuff, they're gonna come across that cage. They can't get behind it. And they, they have to go in the front. And and most of the time you're not even if the wind was a little bit off, you'll probably catch that cat that way. So I like this up where they can't get behind it. But like I said, sometimes you can't do that. You you, you know the cat's gonna come down the middle of this draw, it's open. You're gonna just I just really pile the brush around it as best I can and make sure that cage is aimed downhill so that when those thermals move in the, in the, in the, the night, that, that breeze or whatever, is that scent's coming out of the front of your cage. Because that's probably, uh, I would guess, most of our misses is the wind isn't working in our favor. The cat likes the cage, but he's not getting the information that we want him to have. Probably because the cage has turned the wrong direction. Um, I had a video right in December before we game camera thing. Only time I ever kept, set two cages, and I set it in a little skinny wash off the side of the road. And I set them opposite directions, going down downhill, and I and I blocked it in with with uh, branches and stuff. And the the one aimed up the wash was a bigger cage. The one aimed down the wash was the smallest cage, the eight inch. And so I didn't, uh, we caught him, I caught a bobcat there, but it wasn't on video. But then what I did like was there was a, a, a lion with three yearlings and how their reaction was, they went right past the big cage, the, the mom, and she was sniffing all over that, that lower cage, the smaller cage, and because I think it was being downhill and not uphill. She, it's almost like she didn't, didn't get any information from that. You know, they're the back of the cages are butting each other. They're right next to each other. But and then when they move back through a couple hours later, the same thing. They uh, they like that lower cage because everything was all the scent was coming out the bottom. So um, some places, you know, you try to aim it away from where people can't see you. You know, you see where it's just the gate, and then you pile a brush to try, to try to hide it, but it's aimed up the wash. Um, sometimes you have to do that, but more often I'll try to figure some way else to aim that cage. Uh, even if I have to put the wash on the other side of the road, but I'll try to aim that cage downhill and try to block it where people can't see it. You know, make a brush pile out front and then also cover the cage. Just to keep people from looking out the wash real quick and seeing a big rectangle hole. And then, oh, what's, what's that? Go take it and stuff. But I would aim that thing down, downhill. Um, the other thing, and so um, this is what I also use. Right? It's basically the, my cat juice. Um, and a lot of uh, old time coyote people do this, and people have used it in the past. This take, I am the first female that I harvest in the year. Um, I'll go ahead and, and put her in a, in a little bucket of, after I skin her, a uh, little about five gallon bucket, a little bit of water, and, and I'll, I'll soak her in there. You know, and like I said, coyote people do this. But I'll soak her in there, let her sit five or ten minutes and then uh, ring her out. And so you have a little bit of a female cat, you know. We can't smell it. It does have a smell, but it's almost, it's almost I don't know how to describe it. I say just do it, but that way, and then what I do is I, I spray that, the whole back of the cage, and that way that cage smells like a female cat. Because everybody knows that the easiest cat to catch is the second cat. Once that cat cage has been, smells like a cat, if another cat comes by, he can smell 
Oh, there's a cat one in there. Can you yeah. Do you ever use their gall off their liver in your water to say? No, but that's a good idea. I tried. The nurse tried to show me how to do that, and I just and that gall, that gall sack is so thin. I need to find a better way to to pull that out with a syringe. But um, I didn't, I didn't do try that at all this year. But that's a good idea. The gall, you know, uh, what we harvest out of cats is, is, uh, is it important? They should do a demo on that. You know, the kidneys. Plants, all that stuff is important uh, when it comes to cane trap because you can, then you can start making your own um, side because that's the most expensive stuff is is our uh, our gland lure. so if you could save a little bit from that that, that helps but this if, if you want to try it it works for me along with my longest call but that cat juice really does help. It just makes that cage smell like there's a cat that's already in it. So it's after you skin the female, you just soak it? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you get, the, and you use the water, and yeah. the blood and the water and stuff in there? Yeah, correct. And, and it's good because you'll get hair and some dirt and stuff like that. And I have uh, my jugs here, but I, before I pour it in my bottle, um, I'll filter it through like a paper towel. Uh, just get some of that that junk because these clog very easily, but they seem to I really enjoy using it. I think it helps a lot. You know. Why a female cat? Uh, because we want to catch males. So um, I I think using a female would be better. And uh, you know, don't know if she's going to eat or not, but uh, it, it, that, just that smell of that female cat uh, when the batons start running later in the year. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, I missed you earlier, but you're just soaking the hide? Yeah, just soak the hide for a little bit. I mean, work it, get all, get all her smell up. Try to get the blood and get all that stuff as off if you can. You know, cause I guess I, that wouldn't help that have a bunch of bloody water. But if you get the blood off and then just rinse her in there, soak her. You know, and you have more of a smell when you do a coyote, because a coyote, as you all know, has very specific smell. You can soak that, and so that's why coyote users do it because it covers up a little bit more human scent and it smells more coyote. But why do not we work with a cat? And it seemed to really help that that cat juice. And so uh, if you use it, I, I expect some royalty out of that idea. <laughs> um, the only other thing I started this year and I didn't have enough time. And you might have seen uh, some videos and these. Uh, um, I used my Christmas money and, and found some little squeaker boxes. And you can't hear it because it's loud in here, but uh, when it's dead quiet uh, out in the wilderness, I, I, I mainly got it for those cats that uh, after a week I'll re go resent. So it's on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, I'll reset my cages. Um, with lure, urine, everything, make sure everything's good, um, check for tracks, smooth things out, make sure everything, I'll, I'll, I'll let the gate go, make sure nothing's, uh, um, rust hasn't set in or anything like that. If I miss some cats, then I started, I started the last night, I started setting the squeaker boxes, so maybe that cat will come back. If he didn't like something in my cage or the wind was wrong, I thought well, maybe this would help. And so I, I would just set it in the back of the cage. And I, I can hear it now. It's just a small squeaking uh, noise. But you can pick those. There's several different brands. Other people have tried it. Uh, I don't know. I guess I don't have enough information. I do know that um, I caught two cats in one cage. And I had a squeaker box. And then I caught one other cat with a squeaker box on it. So, uh, without knowing if the cat was attracted to this or the squeaker, we're not allowed game cameras, so it, it's hard to to know. But I don't see it ever hurting. You know, if I can collect that cat that for some reason missed by doing a squeaker box, um, that's something experiment. Um, I thought I would bring this. I know Mercer did a video, but I don't put any stepping guides. But I could see where there's instances that would be useful. Maybe some of you guys use stepping guides where 
um, the cat's like stopping before the pan or stepping over the pan, you could you could use stepping guides um, to stop that cat, you know, and have it land on that that section that you want to land on. Um, that's something I'm not too familiar with because I I think it just it's another blockage just like that line of the, in the sand. I think it's, it blocks the cat more, um, but again, I'm not familiar with that. But some people I do know put put stepping guides to stop them at a certain point. Um, I would, uh, I know some uh, some some put it before so they have to step over, kind of like a foothold, um, step step over into the sweet spot of the pan rather than right right in the beginning where it might not set off. Um, that would be another instance where you probably go in there, but um, if I had to put one out, put, put one in the back and stop it, but um, I really don't. I don't care for it. Uh, that, but it's it's an option. Um, you do about um, like foxes. I normally let my foxes go, but I'll keep a handful. That's about what I do. But when I do that, obviously there's going to be some blood in the cage. What's, what do you think about that? How thoroughly do you clean that out? Um, so my foxes, I don't shoot them in the cage. Um, I pull them out with my catch pole. Um, the cats, of course, with the catch pole, when I dispatch them, leave them in the cage. Uh, when you dispatch a cat, leave them in the cage. You slip that, slip that pole under the gate. Um, and because, you, you know, as they, of course, they'll, they'll bend the cage a little bit here and there, but you want that urine, feces, that smell, just to, as they, you know, they'll even rub some hair off as they're, they're pushing against the cage. Get that smell, keep that smell in the cage for a cat. Fox, uh, I'll pull out. They, of course, like this coming out, but try to hold the cage in place, pull them out, and then, then I dispatch them that way. Uh, that way there is no blood in the cage. You will get some over the side or in the, you know, wash or where you're at. Um, that's just kind of the way it goes, but, but that way it's not in your cage, and, and, and then after every set, of course, um, after 12 days, I'll pull the traps, it takes me two days, um, I'll power wash them, I want them all clean, I know someone asked me a question yesterday, but I'll, I'll power wash them after every, every line. That way it's all fresh, all new. Because that gland lure, that call lure, will get, it gets all over the place. You know, or catch a javelina and it has, you know, they have a musk plant on the back. They do, it smells musky. It's, I want to all smell brand new. Like I just bought them. That way they're all, when I reset, it's all in the back. It's all in the front, here, back. And it's not on the front, not on the side and top. So power wash them, clean them as best you can after every every line, every you know, you start moving up. I think that's beneficial. Ah, uh, just just plain water. Yep, that's what I do. Um, like my power wash can have soap. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be it, it doesn't really change really for that. It's mainly to get because it's it's normally hard uh, the glam lure and then the call lure is, you know, it's petroleum jelly, so it's all gooey. So you really gotta try to get it off. Yeah. You like to cover your cage when it's set pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and if you if you covered it just lightly, it probably wouldn't work as well. You think? Um, yeah, because uh, of course a lot of my traps are in the desert, so I'm trying to use creosote and and mesquite to to cover these cages. You can only you know, you can only do so much down in the desert. I like that's why I like uh, uh, junipers and stuff. They, you know, they have a they have a nice curve to it. You know, now we're getting into arborists and you know, but I, I do like trapping better because the, the foliage is much better and, and it kind of forms around the cage. But I do like to I do like to cover it quite a bit, especially the back. What do you think about using tarps? Um, to cover. Um, yeah, you could. Well, um, like I said earlier, you said if you're in winter country up north um, and stuff, you use plastic bags, and then I have clothes pins to kind of hold it to the cage uh, on four corners. 
Um, of course, the brush will hold it down as well, but uh, it may flap a little bit and that might shy the cat away, but definitely, if you're in cold country or if it's a rainy season, um, or a lot of snow, I would say cover your cage. Um, I use carps on all my, yep. and um, I wrestle with the back one. Um, obviously, I, brush, I still brush a lot. Yep. Um, but I wondered whether I, I usually close off the back completely. Oh, okay. And I wonder if that's a bad thing so that they can at least see through. Yeah, correct. In, in my opinion, it's a good idea to cover because it looks like a cave, and cats love caves. But uh, I wouldn't cover the back, in my opinion. Let that air flow through the back. And that'll just even help it if you cover with the tarp or the bag. That'll just help that just move right out. You know, it, it won't have a chance to really go out and brush. But I, I would say brush it heavier. I know Mercer, there's videos of him. He just put it in the middle with the cage. My experience is like what you said. If you don't have that, if you don't have that tarp down pretty tight, it flaps with the wind and that kind of scares them. But if if you have it down tight, you're okay. But sometimes when you have heavy wind, it just blows. Yeah. There's little clips on them. Yeah. It tends to take that part away. Yeah. I would yeah. make sure it was real tight. Yeah. Because tight, I've scared. Tight. I have. I believe I've scared quite a few cats off. When with it's just a little been yeah. Yeah. wind comes at night and it just yep. That's why I close paint all four corners and then when I really do I really brush it in, hold hold that in place. That's why I've gone to not doing canvas too much. Or you know, yeah. Canvas. Most of my sets like said this year. If you'll do that heavy brush, in my opinion heavy, that's better. heavy brush, yep. And um, Near so I'm not gonna cover the cage but yeah. but find whatever you can and Cover it mainly the back. Just get keep keep his nose as far away as from the back as possible. The best way to do that, just shove it in a bush, shove it in an island of trees, keep it keep it where he can't he, he can't go in the back. And uh, and then when I make sure you put um, some kind of because we don't have game cameras anymore, can't use them. Use uh, Use sand, soft, something where you can use the cheat band's game camera, see it, what prints has approached the front of that cage, and and also what direction. Half my cats come this way, half of them I always see two, two paw prints right in front of the gate, or a couple steps in, that's happened quite a few times, but at least you can see what's happening in front of your cage, and, and you can make decisions accordingly. On that, so Lance, Lance always uh, did on his set, which I like. Um, that I may start doing is sometimes they they put a put a ring of rocks or put some, put some sticks, almost like you're guiding it in. You don't have to, but it also right, helps right. get that. Yeah, it helps get that cat in front of that cage, and maybe not so much on the sides. You know, if he comes from the side, maybe he's not smelling something correctly. But get that visual look where he can actually see in the back of that cage, not just pass by and do this number. So that, there's always little things. It's good to talk to everyone here. I've never gone on anybody else's cage line before, so I don't know, but I've just seen pictures, videos, and I know what works for me. Um, but that's that's about it. Is there any question, anything anybody else wants to add that you do at your set? Flagging is very important. So definitely use flagging. So, are, you know, I've trapped a, a little bit. I mean, I did it for one season, and, and it was a big learning curve. Yeah. Me. But are, are you are you guys mainly focusing on? Because I heard you mention wash earlier. Are, are you mainly focusing on washes? Or are you getting uh, out on some flats? Or yeah, some all things? of it. I do all of that. There's there's places I have to I have to hike a quarter mile of cage up there, and I have to check it with binoculars. Um, there's you know, and I catch Tom Tom's up on those ridges, you know, or a, or a wall way up there because it's it's just open coyote country. There's not going to be a lot of cats, but uh, there's all sorts of terrain. You know, I guess it depends on what terrain you're trapping and what you're in. And that's a lot. Also with numbers, you know, I, I catch a lot of numbers. But some of you, where you guys live, um, you have fewer cats. You just got to uh, adapt to where you're at. You know, how you set is 
uh, it's hard to describe, but it depends on where you're at. You know, uh, I don't trap a lot in uh, pine forests, and so I would have to develop a whole new set of skills and experiences to where uh, where was it? if I was a cat in a forest, where would where would I come down to? You know? And there are rocky sections and. Uh, Guy from Nevada sent me no, yeah, sent me a, a picture of his set and big pine forest, but there was a little canyon and he said he had to pull the cat to the side because there's nowhere to set, but uh, use flagging CDs and stuff. But uh, you just gotta figure out where the structure part of your your area where you live in is good. You mentioned the reinforcing the metal. Yes, yeah. I'm all that trapping is public land. Yeah, me too. So you're, would you just say, hey, it's your decision. I would, in the beginning, I was very afraid because these things are expensive and people take them. So I always tell myself that they're gonna, I'm gonna lose two or three, and then two or three are gonna be damaged, and of course I lose game cameras. So, um, but it depends. I, if I catch, yeah, it's worth the risk. And for me, if I know I can catch a cat or two in that spot, uh, as long as I catch that first cat, that, that that cage is paid for, you know, and that's and and then oh, which brings me that was a good question. Um, what I started doing um, with tags on this. So uh, I started with these, and they're much better made. But health risk, you know, rabies testing, just whatever you can to defer people from touching your cages. And, and this helped this year. The, the busy spots where I was trapped near people and quads and, you know, just craziness. I didn't get any traps stolen. And um, all the real heavy spots, they get trapped because I know people are going to walk up to wash They're going to go right by it. Uh, I just made these tags. Uh, it, we were allowed to use the Arizona Game and Fish symbol, but it's an official Game and Fish license trap. Do not tamper. Violators be prosecuted. But I put these tags that up. <laughs> you can you can have it if you need it. So where do you get them? Uh, you just make them. So you you can. Um, I'm trying to remember where we got it, but this was on a specific type of paper, and I can't remember what company I had, uh, which looks more official than what I did this year. And it was just laminated paper and regular size paper. You may see this. This is the best one. Yes. Um, it doesn't look so official. I like it to look like this, where it's very official. Oh, they probably think this is a game of fish trap. It's not. And I'm, I'm the licensed game of fish trapper. So these are very important, and that will help you keep those cages down. Because oh, multiple times I've had, I can see. Lots of people go by my gate, my cage, and I caught caught a cat because they run during the night, dispatch it, and, and but no one's touched it. And so these have come in handy this year. Um, I used to put it right here where they could see it, um, and then I just started moving it to the side. Um, the cats don't mess with it. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just one more thing to draw them up, you know. Oh man, so very important. Glad you good question. What about the front of your cage? How are you how are you setting your door and are you paying attention to whether you're leaving a sign with your hands? Yeah, uh, I'm not worried about my scent, but yeah, absolutely. When I clear in the front, put something so you can see the the prints and if the cat has approached it. But yeah, I, some people use a, a a brush. I'm talking about maybe more of actually whenever you're handling the door itself. I, I just, I used my, my, because it, really the only time I'm handling a door is when I set it, and um, even even when I reset, I normally I, I just I do like that just to see how how it's falling. 
um, make sure nothing's stuck. Um, I always push the corner in, um, like works with Bill. Just it takes any slop out of the gate, gate door. After I set it, I'll push that in, and then it, bump, it falls much quicker when that cat steps on that pan. But really, uh, after I wash it, it I, don't, I don't, I don't see any notice. I'm sure they come in and sniff the door, maybe, um, or maybe the side, the top where I've been carrying it, um, because I do use the same gloves. I don't switch gloves. If you were coyote trapping, yeah, that's totally different. You know, it seems like the cat does. Doesn't that I bet I know it, but I haven't seen anything about it. I was just curious if there was something that's going to be about the same, especially most because it's a big thing, thing, uh, Most important thing is when you're done with this set and, and like, look back at it, don't just walk away. Is the door on backwards, okay? We've all done that, okay? That's several times, some of us, okay? And the cat's walked in, the door's partially, you know, yeah, and then. And the cat's walked out. So double check. Look in the back. Make sure no branches are poking down. You know, that's something that they might not like. Uh, I'll just take my snipper, snip it, or break it off, and make sure uh, it's as clean and clear a path from back as possible. But always, always look back at it. And that's a habit that I I formed, and I and I realized, oh, I forgot to do something. Or oh, let me wipe my tracks away. You know, I, I just use my foot. But so maybe you just use a brush, and that that helps. It also it lets me know that some some idiot over there standing in front of my trap and walking around, you know, a human being. So um, that's another thing I can do. Any other questions? Input. Um, feel free to ask. There's a lot of good cages here. So just get my Besides the flagging that you got on top there, just a little bit of things. So that's just to use that for visual cue for like your longer range ones. Yes, yes correct. And yep. then have you ever tried using the just like a piece of bailing wire or something on the front yes, of the cage to hang I, your flagging instead of doing them up high up in a tree branch I mean, or something? Yeah, do, do both. But uh, that's what I got started this year when I watched the new videos. Is I really liked it. Um, even though you were in good spots. Uh, I like the fact that you had that baler wire with some tinsel cone going down. And to me, that just adds an extra visual cue. Let's get that cat over here in front of your cage. And I really like that idea, so I did that on several ones that if I was worried about the cat, you know, uh, not liking the cage or something, or is too far apart. Um, you know, some wash I set, like really, it was, it was probably half. 50 yards wide. So if I had, I should have sent two cages, but those cats will run the side of that wash. That big wash, is they're not gonna come down the middle. Uh, they're gonna run where the bushes and the trees are on the side of the wash. So if it was me, I'd set both, but I only set one, but I really flagged it. I flagged the cage, I flagged above it. Um, so the feather can run, but that tinsel, that tinsel really, uh, I really like that. So I'm gonna use that a lot for the next year on that. So. Good question. Oh, yeah. We kind of got into some of the things about plot also. Um, so stuff. One thing that I've been trying to is kind of like making a V. So say the wash is running this way, and the cage there. Put a little V in there. Kind of make the cat move towards the cage. Uh, oh, like with brush or something? Yeah, brush oh, okay. or rocks or something. Yeah, absolutely. It kind of makes it you know, oh, sort of Right there, yeah. I, you can definitely do that, you know. I, I run a lot of cages, so that would be a lot more work for me. Um, so I, yeah, I try to trust the cat that it, that he can see that, but that's a good idea. The cats can be cubby real easy like that, funnel. Um, so tricks like that really do, do help. They have to go in front of your cage. Um, but leave a, leave a little area so you can hear and yeah, so by and, and uh, do that. Okay, well, thank you guys for listening. And thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you guys. Thank you. How do you top this season? Probably yeah. won't. <laughs> All right, guys, that was Jim Ball. He's doing a cage demo for us. And uh, we've got quite a few more demos out here, so we'll keep it uh, going for you guys. And uh, we'll show you what we got next. Stay tuned. Yeah.